Um, so this section I wanted to talk about setting up your airlocks. Um, well, normally, you know, you might do this on the ship, um, but I'm doing it in space, and so I'm sort of justifying, I don't know how I justify this, but an airlock opens out into the asteroid, so be it, whatever. That's just how the game mechanics work. So I have to work around that. Um, I never let narrative spoil my level designing. Um, so the airlocks, first of all, what you do is you bring in... Um, it's made up of three parts, each airlock. So the first part is a blueprint... And for those that don't know, blueprints in um, well, the blueprint function in Unreal is a very flexible function, um, but basically it is used for a collector. You can use it to collect together objects. Now, in this case, this is a collection of models that are put together as well as some other aspects, and they are. Um, and if we look at our world outliner and I double click on it, you can see it's called ISO Airlock Start BP. Okay, so that's what you'd need to search for. Um, in the content browser so if I come to here um, and actually you can just do it at the top of content if you wanted to and you can just type airlock basically and then you can add a filter and say blueprint class I want to show you and it will just bring up everything with the name airlock on it in the blueprint class scroll down and what we're looking for that's you see where it says end that's the one to put at the end of the level obviously um, but it has one for start and that's the one and then you just drag it and drop it into your map now I normally have my first airlock starting at, um, if I go into details over here, zero, 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 oh sorry, uh, zero, no in this case I've raised it a little because I'm using a, um, a terrain, I wanted to raise it up a bit and then I use the terrain to come up to it, but essentially you can place it anywhere you like but you need to remember these coordinates because they are um, potentially quite, uh, they're, they're really important and I'll show you why in a second, so that's interesting, let's set to 1799, that should be 180, because it's basically turned around, uh, let's correct that while we're here, okay good, um, so it's important to record, so what I normally do for my side is I just basically take my snipping tool or clipping tool and then just I basically capture that and keep that somewhere handy nearby. Now the reason why I'm going to do that is because I have two other elements that I need to bring in um, and they need to be in exactly the same coordinates as this one. Okay, So what I'm going to do is uh, the next piece we're looking for is another uh, blueprint and it's uh, the items and what that means basically the items are the weapons and things like that which you can see showing up here um, around the edges here uh, these are racks for weapons, and if you, and so there's a blueprint which brings those in. So what we're looking for, so for here, I basically go up to content again, and I search for items. That then brings, and you see you've got blueprints here. They show me these little circles, but L items base end um, mid start. Mid start is like when you're in map two. You're not at the very beginning of a uh, thing. But this one here, L items start is is what we're looking for. So you can drag that in, once again, drop it anywhere on your map, but then you come up here and you update the coordinates of that element that you've dropped in so that they match this exactly, which is why we're keeping um, keeping this handy, so that we, we remember these so we don't lose them. But um, yeah, basically you just, you just enter the same coordinates. If you've rotated it, then you can do that too, 180. And uh, just to get it in exactly the same spot. And when you do, you should see those weapons pop, it, pop into place there along the edges like this and line up nicely um, and then finally there is the kind of the more game oriented aspects which are these kind of volumes and stuff around it and things like that and those are held not in a blueprint but they're actually held in a level so if you see this tab here levels you can pull this any tabs you're looking for you can find them in this windows uh, drop down find levels and I've just dragged it over here and what you can see is I've got two levels here I've got transition airlock and transition airlock end um, transition airlock is our starting one and is obviously our finishing one um, and so in order to bring this in basically I come here and I say I want to add an existing level it's a level and basically what these are these are maps or, that have been created by Straight Bomb Bay that are sitting out there in the game directory for you to bring in and anybody who's used Source Engine you can think of these as instances Okay. Um, basically they are maps that you embed into your map so that you can repeatedly use them over and over again in different levels and you don't have to constantly rebuild them all the time. 
So in that case, what we're looking for is um, uh, the levels here. So so for here, to find previous maps that have been built, you can come to the Maps folder. If we go into Station 1, you can see we've got Transition Airlock and Transition Airlock End. And you would select Transition Airlock and click Open, and it would appear then in this list here. Um, now, what you have to do though is in order for it to always be available, um, this is weird but you have to get used to it, basically you have to right click on it once you've added it and change streaming method from blueprint to always loaded and that means every time I load my map this is always going to appear every single time so it sort of is kept in real time with your map as, you, as you're working on it. So don't forget to do that when you add that. And then you need to add, and, and so we're still working on the, on the transition airlock. Later on, when you add the final airlock, you'll add the transition airlock end uh, as, an, as another level. One thing that's really important, though, is that if you were to move, say you added that, if I click away, you can see that's blue. Okay, This is really bad. Okay, Once you've added it, always make sure you click back on persistent level, double click. I've gotten into so many times and so many problems. Because these are extra levels, these are different maps. If I just keep that selected, anything I add in this space is going to be associated to this transition airlock map, which is already pre-configured in, in, in advance elsewhere, which I don't want. It is not going to exist in this persistent level. So that basically, if I turn that off, you can see these aspects appear and disappear. Oh, sorry. You see that those elements disappear. Having all everything that you need in your app in the persistent level is what we want. So if ever you see this, any any of these other sub maps are blue, you're in danger and you need to make sure you double click back on the persistent level and make sure that that's always the sort of the selected level that you're working in when you're building things. Oh, it's such a pain in the ass when you have to then go this and then figure out, right, okay, well, what's left? What did I, you know, cock up? And then you have to copy and paste it and bring it, you know, and then select this. Blue. Anyway. It's just a nightmare, so um, that's something to consider. So once that's done, the other thing you need to do with the transition airlock is you need to put it in the right place. And so in order to make sure it's, it's aligned, you can click on this option here and it says Summon Level Details. And you can actually select the position for where this level should appear in your map. And in this case, you can see we've got um, uh, 000, zero, zero uh, for the transition airlock and um, yeah, so basically that's going to appear at the, at the zero point, same as mine. Um, and that brings in, as I say, a lot of these elements. Anyway, so once that's done, um, you then need to set up your end airlock. Now, there's a few other elements, actually, we need to bring into our map at this point before we start setting up the end airlock. This little guy is the start buddy. So basically, there is a marker for the beginning of the map and a marker for the end. Right, the, the airlock is what we want to get to, and that tells the game when to stop and start, but this guy is what drives this golden path starting point, okay? And he's got a start buddy. If we go to the details here, you can see start buddy, and um, yeah, and basically all you need to do is drop him outside the front door of your, of your starting airlock, that's all. Um, and then at the very end of the map, and bear with me, we're going to go flying over here, um, there is a different entity which uh, we can pull. And but these are both blueprints as well, by the way, so you'll need to search for them. I'll show you how to do that in a second. But if we get to the very end, you will find a level context entity here. It's this little guy here. You can see it's level context blueprint, blueprint and what we do in the level context blueprint is you see there's an option here that says start buddy, which is the other entity we had at the beginning. So we're linking them together basically. We're saying, hey, who's your start buddy? Uh, and if you click on it, you, know, you can basically, it will say, well, there's only one start buddy in the map, it's this guy, and I can just double click and select him. And vice versa, when you go to your start buddy, it's going to say, well, who's my level context? And you, you can double click on that option, you'll see an option saying level context. You click on it and it will go, well, there's only one level context in the map, here it is, and you just select it. So essentially you're then connecting those two um, uh, entities together using uh, settings in each one. So once you've got those two placed, that then gives the, um, the engine the ability to draw this golden path, okay, or the context uh, tools. In the uh, in the in the engine, so um, what else do we need to get our game running? So there's those two. Oh, also we have to search for them. So up here in our content, um, basically we're just taking start. Uh, 
I think it's underscore. Oh, actually, I'm in the wrong section. Sorry, should be over here. Um, actually, you can look. now. What we've got is a blueprint, so always filter for that, and then scroll down, and we're just looking for start buddy as a blueprint. Missing him somewhere. Yeah. Uh, okay, I'll go find him in a second. Anyway, um, or maybe he's not a blueprint. Maybe he's something else. Hang on. He's probably named slightly differently. It's all right. I'll find him in a second. Um, I'm winging it. Let's go back and double check. What are you called? Start buddy self, so there's no underscore. There he is. Don't know why that didn't come up before. Is he a blueprint? Yes, he is. So um, that's what we're looking for at the beginning. If you drag and drop him in, you'll see he turns up. I've already got one, I don't want to. So you get rid of him. And then the other one was level context. Um, BP, that one there. Okay, so those are our sort of start and end elements, really key, need to get them in um, to go through. Um, then the other thing you need to do is, there's a few other entities to bring in, hang on, so let's see, I think I've got them around here somewhere. And these are really important because otherwise your game doesn't work without them. Uh, and they are in the guide, I think one of them is missing. So the first one is a um, level streamer. Uh, I normally add to mine. Uh, you don't need to do anything with the settings, you just drop that element in. This one is a level context mapper. So what this does is this this kind of breaks the map up into these squares that you can see here and then figures out what all these squares might be. So obviously your map might have big flat areas and stuff like that and corridors. It's going to draw these squares over it and it's going to assign um, various values to those squares as to where things should spawn and stuff like that. So that's what the level context mapper does. And that's that element there. So you can just search for that. Once again, that's a blueprint. Um, and then finally, this one here, is an AI coordinator info BP, so another blueprint, and you see it's got a little, little, little dragon head that's for an icon. Um, and this, other your bots won't do anything if you don't bring this in. They won't shoot. Basically, they'll follow you around, but they won't shoot anything. So this is really important to bring in, and that, and your bots will suddenly come to life uh, in your map if you include this. Um, so those are key, and then the other really key area to this, I think, is the um, nav uh, situation. So if I hit P, you can see here that we have this green, really garish green section. But what essentially it's doing is, for each area where I want my players to be able to run around, I have to draw, uh, uh, use a nav volume. So if I go into my place actors over here and go to volumes, scroll down, you can see I have a nav mesh bounds volume. And it comes in, it's just a little square. And basically you're just going to change the size of it by going to your uh, scale tool, making it bigger. And you just want to cover the floor of any areas where you want the players to run around or where you want the bots to run around and the enemies to show up. So I'm going to get rid of him because otherwise it's not mapping. But basically wherever those areas appear so uh, for example here's one like that okay now you can see that i've drawn a square over that area and as you see that that, that green starts to build when i add that mesh, nav mesh bounds over that area and it's basically saying this i've figured out that players can walk on these sections here it's done that automatically um and I have basically covered my entire walkable areas in my map with those nav mesh bounds. So I just copy and paste and drag and make it sure it's covering the floors and the walls and stuff like that. And you can see, and it automatically figures out those walking areas and highlights them in green. So that's a lot of information, but hopefully you can go back and listen to my recording again. But once that's done, once you've got all those areas in green, then what you need to do is, is you can basically build your map or try to build your map and see how well you get on. So if we come out here, what I can do is um, look at this SB tools option. And you can do an SB full level build and that will basically set those, um, oh, hang on, no, right. Oh, I just hit play, I didn't mean to. Okay, but basically um, it will create those squares all over the, the map, um, which help 
the bots navigate everything and help the game engine to figure out what to do and it will also build these nav connections and stuff like that you see these arrows basically showing where bots can jump to and stuff like that we're going to talk about part uh, uh, path buddies in a minute as well. Um, I accidentally started the game by accident there, just a second. Um, so coming back to this, what I, the reason why I did that is Alt P plays the game, P turns the nav on and off like that. Um, so looking at uh, this, sorry, so, so basically building those tools will create all these squares. Now if you've got a, a clean connection, if say for example your entire map was just a flat surface, that golden path should now appear, okay, showing that it's got a clean path from here to there. If however you have, like I've got here, some jumps and drops and things like that that you want the bots to be able to navigate, what you've got here is a path buddy entity. Once again it's a blueprint, so you can find it in your uh, you can find it in your content browser uh, here. So if I type path, there's not that many, and it should come up as the top one. Ooh, maybe not. Hang on, buddy. Can't type path buddy BP. There you go. No, so you want to avoid this. You need to. You need the the blueprint. I kept making that mistake. And what you do is you drop two of them. You drop one of them at the top one part of a jump, say for example you had a jump over a, a small gap or something like that or a drop down, you put the path buddy at the beginning, you put another, and you drop another path buddy at the bottom and then what you do is you go into the path buddy uh, details and what you want to do is connect up those two path buddies together so for example in this case I could grab this dropper pipette and I could move across and say, uh, no it's already got a path buddy which is why it's saying don't do it but I could basically just say right you are said clear that, hang on a minute, I never know how to clear these out, but anyway, say that was clear, basically I hit the dropper pipette and just click on the other one, and I have to do the same for this path buddy, so I have to connect them in both directions, so this guy should be pointing at this guy, and this guy should be pointing at this guy, and once that's done, and so if you're finding any areas, like for example here in my map, I had a tricky few steps, and my my nav green stuff wasn't covering it properly, you see there's a gap there, so I stuck a path buddy between the two just to cover the gap so the bots will sort of jump and, and they're able to make it through. So if you're finding any spaces where your bots are finding it difficult to navigate or you can't get that golden path to create, then just stick a path buddy in between where you suspect that the problem might be and that should um, bridge the gap and, um, and enable that, that, yeah, that path to go. And then once that's done, even without the, the golden path, you can jump into your map and play it just by clicking on uh, holding alt down and clicking P and hitting the P button sorry um, as you can see that brings you into the game um, if you've got it working your bot should appear um, and if you've got your golden path working properly that is where you will start to see aliens uh, arriving. And the minute you see the minute you see these aliens appearing then you know the game's working you're in good shape you should see items you should see weapons all sorts of things to um you know, to work anyway i better stop there because that's a lot of information Excuse me. uh thank you for listening <laughs>